glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord, even when it's freezing cold out. And man, we're here tonight. Let's stand together. Father, we love you. We worship you this evening. We pray, God, that your presence would just come in this house in a special way tonight, we pray. God, that you would touch every heart and life that walks through these doors, those who are watching online. God, that your spirit would just go to them. Lord, that you would uplift and encourage and give strength tonight. Lord, we want to lift you up. We want to worship you. We want to minister to you. You said, if I if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to, my, to me. Lord, you were lifted up on Calvary's cross as you died suspended between heaven and earth. But tonight, God, we lift you up with our praise. We lift you up with our worship. And God, we pray as we lift you up tonight that you will draw, you will compel. Your will will be accomplished in this place and in this city. We ask it now in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Let's worship the Lord tonight. We bless your name, God. Come on, let's just take a moment and just raise our hands in this place. Let's give God some thanks. Let's give him all the glory. Let's give him all the praise. You're worthy, Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name.
worship you in the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. We bless you, Jesus. Shining rain, even sorrow and pain. Even Jesus is my comfort and my guide. One day, by His grace, I'll see Him face to face. I will rest forever by His side. Say, I'm blessed. I am blessed.
I look back over my life, I see that he has, he has done great things. Come on, he woke me up this morning. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. One last time. Think of what he's done for you, for he has. presence of the Lord is in this room tonight. I feel, I feel anticipation. Hallelujah. Can somebody just praise the Lord in this house? Hallelujah. He has done great things. He has done great things. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. We worship your name. We magnify your name. We exalt your name. We extol your name. We lift up your name, Jesus, in this house. We magnify you and we honor you, King Jesus.
thanksgiving break. I know we like to take a praise break, but we got to take a thanksgiving break. Hallelujah. Maybe you're saying, Pastor Dylan, I'm not in the job I want to be. There's not enough uh, money in my bank account right now. But how about we start with, oh God, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Lord, I thank you that I'm in my right mind, that I have clothes on my back and a roof on my head. God, I thank you that I'm not on, on medication like I used to be. God, I thank you that I don't have to go to the doctor every week. God, I thank you that my chains are gone and I've been set free. Somewhere in this, I was going to do it before I preach, but we're going to do it now. He said, get my people around the front and tell them just to forget about everything that's going on and just worship me for a little bit. So I'm inviting everybody who wants to come. Let your troubles just melt away. Let's just focus on nothing else for the next few minutes than worshiping Jesus Christ. Let your stress just melt away. Let your worry just melt away. Well. Let's worship him as a family tonight. Come on, family of God.
worship you. I live, I live to worship you. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live, I live to worship you. Yeah, we bless you, Lord. You bless you, Lord. You're worthy tonight. You're worthy. To worship you, my soul, purpose, and life. I was like, you know what? I, I'm not lifting my hands for this person anyways. He wasn't a believer. And anyway, I started worshiping and lifting my hands and praising the Lord. And before I knew it, and I want to say this too, just before that, he was like joking around, you know, making fun of Christianity and stuff like that. You know, people are sometimes. But I raised my hands and I said, I'm not worshiping him. And it's not about any of that. I'm worshiping Jesus. And before I knew it, I looked over and man, he was bawling and squalling like a little girl. Come on, somebody. It's okay to cry in church. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I just wanted to share that to encourage somebody. Do not let the devil steal your worship. The Bible says that, and I just thought of this, for some reason, in, in heaven, it's a whole worship service. We know that the, the, the elders are around the throne saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Yeah. And the funny thing is, the Bible actually records in the midst of that, that the prayers we pray, um, for some reason, God takes the prayers and he puts them in like a golden dish. And I was thinking about it. And could it be that, you know, some of our loved ones are, are like that guy that I brought here. And, and, you know, God wants to set them free. Is there someone in your row that God wants to set free? And is it, what if he's just waiting for you to worship him? And maybe their deliverance, maybe their freedom, maybe their breakthrough is actually in our worship. Hallelujah. The guy who got lowered through the roof, it was, not because, of, it was because of his friend's faith. Hallelujah. Our worship matters, Believer's Church. Hallelujah. One more time. Can we clap our hands to Jesus in this house? Amen. And just say hallelujah. We got breath in our lungs. We got a reason to shout. Our sins are forgiven. We're washed in the blood. Heaven is our home. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Y'all maybe praise your way back to your seats tonight. We're going to take some offering and um, the announcements tonight. Hallelujah. We're going to wait on you for your tithes and offerings tonight. 
And uh, before we do that, I just want to make mention that um, we've kind of had uh, a report that from that there was some garbage under the chairs and orange peels and things like that. And, uh, you know, I hate to mention it from the pulpit, but w this is the house of God, and we shouldn't be leaving orange peels and coffee cups and, and garbage under the under the uh, the chairs. I didn't tell you that yet, but um, I know I'm preaching to the faithful Wednesday night crew, so we just wanted to make mention of that. If you guys have drinks with no lids, please drink those in the foyer, and, uh, you know, there's garbage cans up here in the front. Actually, in the Old Testament... And at the back. I think in the Old Testament, that, that would have been like punishable by death. Come on, somebody. So I, I think we're okay because we're under grace now. But but uh, God bless you guys tonight as we give. Sister Diane's in the back if you want to give by debit or credit. Um, the ushers are going to bring the offering plates up here to the front. And we can also go to the Tithely app and the Believer's Church website. And uh, let's just sing another chorus and give to the Lord out of our worship for him. In Jesus' name. you don't see when people grow older but they do wear hearing aids and they wear 
gosh knows what. Anyway, greetings out there tonight, wherever you are, if you're on the internet, if you're new here tonight, greetings. And those, of course, that are members, bless you for being here tonight. And we want to, uh, oh, where is our connect card? Digital? Well, we do have one. And all you have to do is hold your phone up, or you can fill out a card, or you can do this online also. And if you do, we'd appreciate it because we love connecting with the people. There's no question about it. Well, we have a week ahead of us. It's Christmas. And we start out with Christmas Eve, which we will have a service here at 7 o'clock. Everybody welcome. But there will be no Sunday morning service. This is for the family to enjoy, and please do that. We also have the New Year's um, night watch service. This is a potluck, a prayer meeting, you might say. We are going to pray in the new year, and we look forward to that. That's going to be 9 o'clock on uh, New Year's Eve, and uh, we look forward to that. We love prayer in the house of the Lord, and... Uh, We'd love to see everybody out. Make it, make it your night. Make it your, your, your New Year's Eve. Let's, let's pray together. Let's bring in the New Year. New Year's Day, we do have a service, but <clears throat> you're going to get to sleep in. It won't be till 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and that will be communion that day. And uh, again, we look forward to that. Everybody's welcome to that. Also, on January the 8th, the following week, we will have an annual anointing service very special time in the house of the Lord. Our pastor anoints every soul that comes to the front of the church. So if you want to be anointed and spoken over, please come. It's a wonderful, wonderful service. We look forward to it every year. And don't forget, between next week, we're here this Wednesday. We'll be here next Wednesday. And uh, we will definitely be having a service. So that will be available to you. I tell you, this man never gives up. He's going to make it make it happen for you. And that's why you should be here. Amen? Amen. Let's enjoy him tonight as he gives the word. And praise the Lord. I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. I needed this service tonight. Amen. How many needed the presence of God tonight? Amen. Amen. It makes the difference. Praise the Lord. Everybody say Saturday night. All right, 7 o'clock, so Pastor Heather's already mentioned it, I just want to push it a little more, Christmas Eve service, I'm going to make an executive decision, at 6.30, in the foyer, we're going to have coffee and tea, and eggnog, and cookies, all right, I'll drink your eggnog. So if you want to come a little early just for a little time of fellowship, and uh, we won't keep you long. We're generally start at 7. We're generally done by 8.30. Unless the power of God moves, we'll, we'll go with whatever he wants to do. Amen. We're looking forward to a great time here in the house of God. Amen. We know Jesus was not born on the 25th of December. We know that he was, a, he was two years old when the wise men found him. There's lots about the modern Christmas story that isn't quite theologically or historically correct. But we are just going to take this time on, on Saturday night because there's something very important that did happen, whatever day it happened on, and it's called the Incarnation, where God became man and dwelt among us. That's what we celebrate here at Believer's Church. We got, maybe I ought to call it Incarnation Night. I don't know. But he became one of us so we could become like him. Isn't that amazing? Praise God. Praise God. And so we invite you for that. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I honor you for being here tonight. It's cold outside. And uh, I'm ready for spring. Already. I think today was the only, the first, official first day of winter. Was it today? All right. Well, I'm ready for the first day of spring. Praise God. But I'm also ready for January 28 and 29. 
Fresh Fire with Andrew Willis. Put it in your calendars. It's going to be fire, I'm telling you. I feel it in my spirit. God's going to move. Right after this service, for just a few minutes, I'd like to speak, since I have them all here, I'd like to speak with our pastors in my office. What I have to say is going to take about 10 minutes. Whatever happens after that's all on you. But uh, if I could get you for at least 10 minutes in my office, I just would like to speak with you briefly. Praise God. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. I've got a short time. I'm going to try and get you out of here right at 8.30 tonight. And uh, Romans 14 and 17 says this, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy. Say those three words. Righteousness, peace, joy. In the Holy, in the Holy Spirit, the, the King James Version, in the Holy Ghost. These guys have got me switched over to the New King James Version. That's why I keep stuttering over when I'm reading the Bible because I've read it for 44 years in King James Version and now I'm trying to be hip and cool. And I, my brain is King James Version and I'm trying to read the New King James Version. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit or if you're old like me, in the Holy Ghost. Romans 14, 18, For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things which one may and the things by which one may edify another. I want to speak to us just briefly tonight on this topic, kingdom identification. Kingdom identification. Father, we thank you for your presence that we have felt so sweetly here tonight for your word, God that gives us life. Lord, instruction, direction, encouragement. Lord, and for your people that are here tonight, for every person that's come through these doors, God, I pray special blessing on them tonight. I pray that you would speak to us from your word. I covet special touch from your anointing this evening, and I ask it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Kingdom identification. When you start really studying the word of God, you find out that there are things that ought to uh, mark and accompany the life of a believer. We, when, we re -re when we were renaming this church from Wide World of Faith Church to Believer's Church, we wanted a name that would speak identification, that would, would speak to people of who we are and what we are and what, what we stand for. And we came up with Believer's Church because the Bible is actually very clear on what, what a believer is, what a believer ought to look like, and what should follow believers. Believers do not chase signs, but signs should follow believers. Amen? That's the word of God. You shall lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. Cast out devils. The, that, those types of things that are recorded in the word of God. Uh, we get into the nine fruit of the Spirit. And then there's the nine gifts of the Spirit that ought to accompany the life of a believer. Amen? How many know that the fruit of the Spirit are, are not only important, but are necessary for the development of a Christian? Everybody wants the gifts of the Spirit. You can, you can go to heaven without ever prophesying, but you're not really going to serve God unless you do have the fruit of the Spirit active in your life. Amen? And so there are certain things, and we can break them down into the nine uh, gifts of the Spirit, nine fruit of the Spirit. We can get into the fivefold ministry. We can get into all kinds of things. But this particular scripture kind of simplifies it and breaks it down into three categories and into three things that follow, ought to follow and ought to identify a believer. For the kingdom of God. How do you know somebody is part of the kingdom of God? For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And so I submit to us tonight, on this Wednesday night, for those who are here and online and those who will watch this message throughout the week, amen, that to identify somebody as a, 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 a believer, a follower of Christ, a Christian, or somebody who is part of the kingdom of God on the earth, that there are three things that this person should have. They ought to have peace, they ought to have joy, and they ought to live a life of righteousness. Can I get an amen? amen? 
People today want to call themselves a Christian. Everybody's a Christian. Everybody's a Christian. I've had, I, I know people, and I'm not, I'm not here to, to poke at anybody or, or to call anybody down or make fun of anybody, but I, I have been with people who have cursed and swore, dropped every four-letter word in, in, the, in the English language and, and took the Lord's name in vain, and when they found out I was a pastor, oh, I'm a Christian too. Okay. By their fruit you shall... Anybody know it? You shall know them. And so bitter and sweet waters can't come out of the same well. You can't have blessing and cursing coming from the same source. There ought to be something different about a true believer. Anybody believe that tonight? There ought to be something different. A, a, a true believer, somebody who is part of the kingdom of God, I was going to say ought to, but it's not ought to. It must, they must walk in righteousness. That when people see us, they see that we are different than anybody else. I'm not saying this to, to brag on myself, but I'm saying this because the world knows the difference between real and counterfeit. And I, I was at work one day and, and somebody was talking about Christians and somebody spoke up and said, oh, he's a real Christian. He don't even swear. They know what's real and what's not real. The world knows what's fake and counterfeit. If I gave you a $100 bill tonight, you better check it. It probably is counterfeit. <laughs> but, but you can tell by the look of it. You can tell by the feel of it. Hello? That this thing isn't real. Something not right about this. And the world knows what's counterfeit. And the world knows what's real. And so if you are going to be uh, an ambassador of Christ, or if you're going to say, I belong to the kingdom of God, then you must walk in righteousness. It's not about rules and regulations. And that's what uh, church has been for a lot of people. And that's what uh, some people's uh, perception of living for God is. It's the do's, the don'ts. You can go here, but you can't go there. You can do that, but you can't do this and, and that sort of thing. That's really not what it is. The Word of God gives us guidelines, gives us boundaries to live by, not to make us feel like we're missing out on something, but so that He can uh, pour out the most richest, of, uh, richest blessings that He has on us. Because when we live according to the Word of God, He is then able to bless us. He cannot bless us when we're outside of the confines of the Word of God. You cannot live in sin and say, I'm blessed of God. That's contrary to the Word. Hello? You cannot live in sin and say, I'm a Christian. Say, I'm a follower of Christ. No, you can't follow the way of the world and follow the way of God at the same time. The Bible makes it very clear. Very clear. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot say you're in love with Jesus while you're smooching with the devil. Hello? So we, ha we have to have a life of righteousness. We have to live a life of righteousness, a, a life that is pleasing to God, a life that separates us unto the Lord. And so when the world looks at us, they know that's a righteous person. That's a righteous man. That's a good man. That's a good woman. They, there's something different about that person. Have you ever set, uh, met somebody and you could sense the presence of God in their life? You could see the glory of God all over them. You met somebody, you never met them before, but you just knew they were full of God because something clicked with your spirit. Amen. When we, we ought to live a life that before we open our mouth, we have already identified who we are by our sweet spirit and by our life that has been consecrated and dedicated unto the Lord. So the kingdom of God is righteousness. Psalm 23, verse 1, a psalm of David, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness. He leads me in righteousness 
The Bible says that when the spirit of truth is come, which is the, the Holy Ghost, when the spirit of truth is come, he will lead us into all truth. He will lead us into righteousness. Uh, amen. For the Lord is our shepherd. God is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. And he leads me in the paths of righteousness. Listen to me now. God is never going to lead you down the path of sin. God is never going to lead you down a pathway that causes you to fall into sin or fall into temptation. I've had people say, oh, well, the Lord was testing me. No, 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 no. You're not going to blame that on God. I had a man one day tell me, he said, he, he, got, he lived a very bad life and very immoral life, and he got saved. And he said one day, he said, oh, he said, I went down to witness to the hookers. He said, and that old devil, before I got out of there, I was sleeping with a hooker. Lord, help me. God didn't lead him over there. That was his flesh that led him over there. That was his flesh that led him over there. The Spirit of God will lead you in paths of righteousness. You can't, you can't just go leave here, go sit in the bar and say, well, the Lord led me here. No, he didn't lead you here. And so we, we, we say crazy things because we try to justify what we've done or, or the failures we have. No, if I'm led of God, he will lead me in the paths of righteousness. What? For his namesake. When we profess to be of the kingdom of God, when we announce to the world, I'm a Christian, I'm a follower of Christ, I belong to the kingdom of God, and then we, we live any old way, and we live no better than they live, we do a disjustice and a disservice to the kingdom of God, to the reputation of heaven, to the reputation of God himself, amen, because he wants to lead us in righteousness for his name's sake. Have you ever heard of somebody disgracing the family name? I don't want to disgrace my family's name. I don't want to disgrace my father's name. I want people when they look at my life to give God glory. Amen. Isn't that what God wants to do with you? Amen. He wants to get glory out of your life. He wants to bless you in front of people so that he can get glory. He wants to provide for you in front of your neighbors so he can get glory. He wants to heal you in front of your doctor so he can get glory. He wants to get glory out of every area of your life. And because of that, he will lead you in paths of righteousness. Listen, I'm going to say something now. So many times I say, well, I just don't know which is the right way. I've got two roads to go. Listen to me now. God will make his way clear if you will submit to his voice and submit to his leading. Sometimes we can't choose because we know God's taken me here. But really, I, I want to go here. There's really no misunderstanding here. We just want our way. But if we'll follow his way, he will lead us in the paths of righteousness. He will lead us in the way that he can bless us. How many know that God is bound by his word? And he cannot bless us when we are living contrary to the word. But when we are being led by him and walking in righteousness, amen, he then can legally bless us. I don't know if I'm making sense to you. Amen. Are you even awake? Praise God. Do a pulse check on your neighbor. See if they're... Matthew 5, 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For what? For righteousness, for they shall be filled. Praise God. If you, want to, if you want to live righteously, God will bless you and you will be filled with righteousness. Matthew 6, 33, but seek first. This is where we get ourselves in trouble. But seek first the kingdom of God and what? His righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. But you know what we do, Pastor Osei, is we say, God, if you'll add all these things to me, I'll live righteous. That's what we do. 
That's not, not, that's not the plan of God. We've got it backwards. If we will seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, again, we put ourselves in the position for God to legally bless us because he is bound to his word. God will never violate his word. So blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. They shall be filled. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All these things will be added to you. So righteousness and the next one is peace. Child of God ought to have peace. I know this isn't bouncing off the wall material, but it's truth. And it's something we got to get back to some of these basic, basic things. Righteousness and peace. I ought to have peace. I ought not always be up in, my, in, in, in arms about something. I ought not to always be worried about something or frustrated or angry. I shouldn't always be in a, in a bad crisis all the time. I've said this before and I say it again. The reason there are, there are some people in our, in our church here and we love them and they're precious and we want to see them conquer and be victorious but the reason some of them struggle so hard is because they have learned to love and, and, and live in chaos. Oh, pastor, is that the truth? <laughs> Come walk with me a while. I've had people tell me, when everything is going good, I get nervous. When everything goes quiet and when, when peace, I, I don't know how to I don't know how to move in that. I don't know how to function in that. The only way I know to function is when everybody's fighting and people are screaming and people are mad at each other and, and, and there's always an uproar. You see, that is that is not the kingdom of God. God is not a God of chaos, God is a God of order. And you will find that every time you start to get order in your life, if you come from a disordered life, every time God begins to order your life or you take steps to order your life in, in a biblical fashion, the enemy will always throw chaos at you to disrupt that order. Everything that's happening right now in the world with all, all the different legislation, all the weird laws, all the crazy things that are going on in schools and in government and in homes and, and all the stuff that's... Uh, there, there, it's, there's only one plan of the devil behind it, and it's to rearrange God's order. God is a God of order. And so somebody who belongs to the kingdom of God should have peace. That doesn't mean they're not going to have trouble. There's going to be trouble. There's going to be struggle. There's going to be problems that are going to come. Your car will break down. You will get a flat tire. You will have a bill that needs to be paid. That's something called life. Hello? That's life. But in the midst of life, a child of God ought to have peace. There should be nothing that can take your peace. There should be nothing that can disrupt your peace. I serve a God. I have been young and now I am old and I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. And so this bill is not going to disturb, uh, disturb my peace. Uh, this doctor's uh, amen, prognosis, uh, diagnosis is not going to disturb my peace. Uh, this family situation, this job situation, whatever situation is not going to disturb my peace. For I'm a child of God. He's got the whole world in his hand. He's going to see me through. If God brought me to it, he'll take me through it. I'm in the hands of an ever-loving God. Amen. And when you realize these things, let the storms rage high. The songwriter said, they don't worry me. I'm sheltered in the arms of God. And so when you realize who you are and what kingdom you belong to, you have peace because he's never lost a fight. He's never lost a battle. Actually, if you flip to the back of the book, you find that we win. Amen. The devil loses and we win. 
Hallelujah. If you fast forward to the end of your life, whether you die and they put you in the ground or whether you go in the coming of the Lord, you win. I said you win. I said you win. I've come to tell somebody you are in a win-win situation. There's no, oh, there's no losing here for you. If you're part of the kingdom of God, there's no way for you. Oh, I feel like running an aisle. There's no way. Somebody shout, I'm winning. I'm winning all the way. I'm winning every day. Every step I'm winning. Every struggle I'm winning. Every battle I fight. I'm winning. Every sickness I face. I'm winning. Oh my Lord. Hallelujah. Pastor, it's tough. I know it might be tough. Amen. But the greater the struggle, the greater the testimony. Woo! Hallelujah. When you come through this thing, you're going to come out and say, look what the Lord has done. Just when I thought it was over for me, God stepped in. <laughs> Praise God. You see, the problem with us is we want a great testimony. But we don't want a great test. But you can't have a great testimony without a great test. You can't have a great healing without a great sickness. <laughs> I just wish I had a great testimony of a great healing. Okay. Be careful what you ask for. Because you can't testify of a great healing until you've had a great sickness. You can't testify of a great victory until you've had a great battle. The reason, oh my Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost. The reason some of you are fighting so hard right now, it's not the, just that the devil's trying to take you down, it's that God's trying to take you up. He's trying to give you a story. He's trying to give you a testimony. He's trying to give you something that you can share with the rest of the world. Sometimes it's not all about you. Sometimes it's God trying to give you the tools and the equipment to, to carry out what He He's called you to do. Uh, I didn't think you'd run an aisle on that. So I'm winning. I'm, I feel that in my spirit that I'm winning. I'm not losing. Don't worry about me. I'm not losing. Tell your neighbor, don't worry about me. Don't worry about me. I'm not going to go down, Brother John. I'm not going to fail. Don't you worry about me. Oh, rejoice not against me, oh, mine enemy, when I fall. For I shall arise. Oh, I come to tell somebody I'm getting up. Somebody say I'm getting up. And I'm going to get up better than the way I went down. I'm going to get up stronger. I'm going to get up more anointed. I'm going to get up with a greater praise, with a greater shout, with a greater dance. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. I'm coming out of this thing. Woo! I'm not losing. There's only one loser. And that's the devil. And that's why he's so mad, Brother Wayne. He's losing. And his time is short. And he's angry because hell is coming for him. The great lake of fire will be his eternal existence. He's going to be bound and thrown into a lake of fire. But we're going to be loosed from our present situation to ever live with the Lord. Oh, my goodness. I just want to teach you a nice little lesson, I said. Whew. I'm winning. I'm on the winning side. Whew. Psalm 119, 165, great peace. Say great peace. Not a little peace. Not peace that comes and goes. I'm not just barely holding on. Great peace have those who love your law and nothing 
shall cause them to stumble. I've got great peace. Proverbs 16, 7, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Oh, don't rejoice over me, mine enemies. I've got peace in the midst of the storm. I'm going to get up again. Isaiah 9, 6, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Somebody shout out the last one. Prince of Peace, Prince of Peace, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David, I don't know what's happening. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom. To order it and establish it with judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Isaiah 26, where you will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Romans 8, 5, for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. If you are not living in righteousness, peace, and joy, then you're living outside of the kingdom. Hello? I don't care. Don't amen me. It's still true. Get in the kingdom. Shut the door behind you. And say, I shall not be moved. I'm in and I'm not getting out. Praise God. Or 1 Corinthians 14.33 For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. But of peace. Oh Lord. Philippians 4, 6, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made to, be known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are noble, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things things. What are you meditating on? What are you thinking about? I'm going to say it again. What you exalt determines what you attract. What are you exalting in your life? What are you speaking over your life? Matthew 5, 9. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of God. Now I want to talk to And I'm I'm watching the clock. I've got four minutes. It doesn't say blessed are the peacekeepers. Peacekeepers do whatever it takes to keep peace. You're mad at me. Oh, I'm I'm, you're you're wrong and I'm right, but I'll, I'll bow down because I just want to keep peace. No, it says blessed are the peacemakers. Sometimes you have to make peace. You're not hearing me. Sometimes there's no peace to keep. You've got to make it. How do you make it? Excuse me. Here's the door. You're not welcome here anymore. What are you doing? I'm making peace in my home. I know we don't have a big crowd here, and I wish I was preaching to the whole church, but in case somebody online is watching this, you're shacked up with Bobo the Clown, and he won't work, and he won't do nothing. It's time to make some peace in your house. (laughs) 
You're letting drug addicts and alcoholics bring their stuff, bring their witchcraft into your house and wondering why there's chaos. No, no, it's time to make some peace. Get the crack pipes out of the house. Amen. Get the sin out of the house. Get the hell out of the house and make some peace in your life. Oh, Lord, don't make me preach. Psalm 16. I got to move on. I got two minutes. Joy. Joy. I'm tired of seeing Christian people look like they were baptized in vinegar. There ought to be joy. Now, I'm not saying you're going to be happy 24-7, but there ought to be some joy. There ought to be some joy. You ought to remember where the Lord has brought you from. You ought to remember what the Lord has done for you. Amen. If nothing else, you ought to remember you were on your way to hell, but now you're on your way to heaven. Now, there ought to be some joy in the people of God. You know what? You're, you're, you're a sinner. You're going to hell. Your life is terrible. You need to come to my church. Get right with God. Ain't nobody wants that. I don't even want that. And I'm saved. They ought to see some joy in your life. Look what the Lord has done for me. He healed my, I'm quoting that song again, but I can't help it. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. Look what the Lord has done. Your life, the way you behave, the way you walk, the way you talk, ought to be a living testimony for the world to see. Nobody's going to want to know your Jesus if they don't want to know you. Write that one down. That's good. All right, I'm over. Stand. Stand. I'll keep preaching. Stand up. Some of you are really trying to get up in a hurry there. I'm going to leave you with just a couple of scriptures. Psalm 1611, you will show me the path of life is in your presence. There's fullness of joy. Fullness of what? Joy. Joy. Are you, do you have joy tonight? Notify your face. Joy. Joy. Unspeakable joy. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Joy. Happiness comes and goes, but joy lasts. Joy lasts. Psalm 30 and verse 4. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of His, and give thanks at the remembrance of His holy name. For his anger is for a moment. His favor is for life. Woo! My Lord, you can preach on that. Weeping may endure for the night. But joy. Ha, I might be hurting right now. But morning's coming. Oh, shut Mahaya. I might be in the valley now. But morning. Oh, my God, help me. Somebody shout, morning's coming. And joy comes in the morning. Woo! Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. There is no such law against these things. One last scripture. Romans 15, 13. Let's get it up there. Romans 15, 13. Now, not tomorrow, not next week. Somebody say now. now. Somebody say I need it now. God, I want it now. Now may the God of hope fill you with all what? Joy. Joy. Just, Lord, help me. You see, the problem is we want to be spooky spiritual. And people who don't never been to church in their life are looking at you like, what's wrong with that person? 
They didn't take their medication today. But when you've got joy, woo! When you've got real joy, when you've got a smile, Sister Vivian, when you've got joy, I don't care who it is. Amen. They'll look at you and say, there's something different about that person. Amen. You want to be spiritual? Get some joy. Put it back up there, bro. I got I to get done. Lord, help me. It's, it's his fault. It's taking him long to get it up there. All right. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and what? Peace. Believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit is not just meant to give you once in a while. The Holy Spirit is meant to give you joy every day and peace every day and hope every day. Woo, my Lord, I'm going to run. Come, come, come. Don't say that to me tonight. I will. Well, I, I, I've quoted it six times, so let's sing it. Look what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. He saved me just in time. And sing it until you get a little joy. Sing it until peace comes. Sing it until hope comes. And then we'll go home. Yay! Look what the Lord has done. Woo! Yeah! Look what Come on, the somebody Lord testify. He healed my body. He healed my body. He touched my mind. Save me. He me. Whoa! Just in time.
Miss us.
You came here depressed. You're living here with a joy and peace in the Holy Spirit. And when the pastor was concluding, he says, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit job is not just to make you have this goosebump once in a while, but the job is to keep peace in you. Is to keep joy in you. Hallelujah. Father, this evening we bless your name. We worship you. Only you can do this. The word cannot offer us joy. The word cannot offer us peace. The word cannot offer us righteousness. Only you. Lord, tonight we pray as we leave this place, this joy will not cease. The joy we receive tonight will not cease. But we continue in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Have your way as we go tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're blessed. God bless you. Hallelujah.